Hello everyone! Thanks for joining me today. So it's been a while. It has been a long while since I have done a Sephora haul. It's been since like before Christmas. I haven't been trying to be good on purpose and I haven't totally been ignoring Sephora's website. There just haven't been a ton of things I've been super excited about and I've become one who will maybe like put something in my cart if it seems appealing and maybe like one thing has been sitting in the cart for a while that I've really really wanted and just other things haven't joined until recently. So um, yeah, I did get this. I wanted to try the new scent from Sol de Janeiro because I love so many of these. The one that's kind of like corally colored and called Bomb Dia Bright, we love that one in this house. But this one, the 59, my goodness is this amazing. We all tried it, me and the ladies, after this order came in last night and we were like, wow, that's good. The description says, share the warmth of a sunset with uplifting notes of vanilla orchid, sugared violet, and sheer sandalwood. And it is just different from anything else I have. Um, I always spray up and like get the scent on my hair, but just a second, there's a kitten needing something. So I'm super happy about that. I had heard some really good things about this one, but it's just so hard to know about a scent when someone's telling you about it through the camera. I mean, in my description, the vanilla orchid, sugared violet, sheer sandalwood. I don't know, that wouldn't tell me much. There's just kind of like this subtle yumminess in there, but I also sense some floral too. It's just, I, I really, really like it. If you have a chance to actually test it or smell it, I would say try it. That's one that really resonates with me. I love that. And then I got a couple of different complexion things here. I wanted to try this Kosas BB Burst. It's the Tinted Gel Cream. I got shade 21 Light Medium Neutral, and I'm just going to be trying it on here with you for the first time. Um, I did like bust into the hole last night, but I didn't try anything on. Okay, here's what it looks like. I wonder if the shade will be okay. I mean, if it's a tinted gel cream, maybe it'll have some give. It says your everyday makeup plus skincare essential, light buildable coverage, hydrating burst of serious skincare, smoothing and blurring effect, vibrant fresh look. We can try this, and then the other thing I got was the Ilia Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. I thought maybe that I could use that on top to build some coverage if I need to, just to kind of get both things on my skin. But yeah, my skincare is on, my sunscreen is on. Does this have sunscreen in it? I don't think it does. I've had really good luck with different Kosas coverage products in the past, so it's coming out in little spurts here. Pump's not quite ready. We'll see if that's enough. We had some wind and rain last night. I feel like we haven't had a good rain in a while, but it was just really windy too. I'm gonna use my e.l.f. duo brush with this, I think. Can you see those dots blending out? They really did kind of mesh in with my skin tone. Okay, we're looking at light coverage here with this product. And it's been out for just a little while here, so you, you may have already seen some people talking about it. I feel like maybe as I get older, I'm a little less concerned about like, oh, let's jump on it, unless it's like wet and wild or something. I'm not so concerned about being the first to grab all the new things. It was incredibly easy to blend. My skin feels a little bit tacky. It was already pretty well moisturized, but the coverage is just super light. I'm getting a little glow off the cheeks. Currently, I'm not seeing anything that's making me go wow about this. Like I said, I'm seeing through to pretty much every problem area, but it just as a whole kind of evened out my skin tone and gave me a little more radiance. I'm definitely not considering this a review. I am just trying it on for the first time, but that's just my initial reaction is that I'm not like floored by it, okay? And then this Ilya stuff, it says weightless firming smoothing ceramide peptide complex. Uh, did you just hear my stomach growl? Uh, it, it wanted to say something. Butterfly lavender. What the heck is that? And kelp extract. Um, the stick, they're trying to do something a little different here because they've got a little indent there for your thumb. A little thumb grip for that stick. Unless mine just has its own special dent. I must see that as a thumb grip. I didn't say anything about a special thumb grip in the claims. Skin that looks like skin. Fountain of youth and a foundation stick. Oh boy. This groundbreaking formula fuses weightless buildable covers with powerful firming and smoothing ingredients. Um, they say it's a natural matte finish. Stays seamless for up to 12 hours. So they say to conceal, use fingers or our shadow brush to pat into skin and then for all over coverage, swipe directly onto skin and blend it in. I think I'm going to pretty much use this all over the skin. And you know I'm just intrigued by a foundation stick. I really like trying foundation sticks. So it very faintly says Ilia on the actual product there. I-L-I-A. And the shade I have is 12N Sycamore. So I'm going to just swipe it directly on. Okay, cool. That looks like that shade's going to really be workable. 
Um, I thought maybe it looked a little dark in the stick, but no. I'm going to swipe that directly all over. Yoink. Okay, so it goes off the stick really smoothly. Not as much slip as the Fenty stick. Going across my skin, it felt just a little bit more like a, felt like a more typical cream. Um, now I'm just going to blend it in with this Profusion brush. It's nice and dense. So we're clearly bumping up the coverage of what's happening across the skin right now. Um, I was very on point, I think, with both the shades I got in these products because they are just definitely melting straight back into my skin tone. This claimed to be like concealer and foundation. Um, I could see me like touching up with this possibly as concealer, but I'm not sure I consider it my everything concealer. I would say you're looking at medium coverage across my skin right now. Um, it does look softly radiant, although I, this is a combination of two products. So, oh, there's a dent on the top too. I kind of like that. Combination of two things. So we can't 100% say, oh, the finish on the skin is all because of the Ilia stick because I had definitely some added glow and hydration from the Kosas underneath. And in reality, I probably wouldn't wear these two together. I just wanted to demo both. One thing for sure, nothing looks heavy at all on my skin. I want to build this up a little bit and maybe think of it more as concealer right here. And maybe we get up to the under eye just a little bit more on purpose and just try that out. So I went around my nose redness, pressing it in. Mm, not incredibly effective in the concealer sense for redness, like a pinpointed reddish place. It softened it a little bit, but it didn't fully cover. And now I'm dabbing over the under eye, doing something, just not as much as a typical concealer is what I'd say. But I like this. I'm very excited to keep trying it, um, trying it over different primers, trying it on its own. It's most definitely not a drying feel on the skin, but it's just a little like thicker pull across the skin compared to the Fenty. Like I said, that one just glides. This one has a little more thickness of product, but yet an all in all medium coverage going across. I think it is buildable to a point. Um, I don't consider it light concealer, but that's just my initial take on this stuff. So now I'm going to take a little pause. I'm going to fill in the blanks on a few steps of my makeup routine, and then we have a new eye palette to show. I forgot. I got another complexion thing. So I went ahead and I did concealer, and suddenly I'm feeling like a lot better about everything coverage wise here. I use my Tarte Shape Tape Radiant. Took a break from my Rimmel for the first time in days. Is it 208 or is it 20B? I think it's 20B. I've got that on and then I set it with my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Powder. Now I've got the coverage level I want to have in the areas I need it. And then I forgot I got this Chocolate Sole Stick. Um, it's the Melting Bronzing and Sculpting Stick. I remember when Chocolate Sole Powder Bronzer was so hot and now they've got it in a stick. So they say it's going to give you that natural looking second skin warmth and dimension that smells as good as it looks. So let's see. Ooh, I like the color of the stick. I like the brown. The stick is not super duper big and wide. Um, that smells all right. Not quite as yummy as the uh, powders were. Whoa! Okay, she's soft. I wasn't expecting that much to come off there. I chose the shade called Chocolate Souffle, and I'm going to take my Sephora 56 and I'm going to hope this blends in because a lot came off that stick. The stick is kind of at that brand new point where there's like a little bitty dip in it and the outsides are a little higher than the inside. So I think just a little extra came off there. But yeah, it's blending in super easily. I need to feel the texture with my with my finger after this. It's so easy to work with. I did not need this product, okay? This was a total like, let's tack it on and make this haul worthwhile kind of thing. <laughs> because, I mean, I have my Persona sticks, I have my M Cosmetic sticks. I already reached the point with cream bronzer where like, I don't need to keep looking, trying, testing. I mean, that is what I do here on my channel, but you know how with some products, it's like, gosh, I'm always gonna be looking for that perfect, mascara or something. And with this cream bronzer business, I'm, I'm totally there. I've found great ones, but this is good too. <laughs> I feel like I got a lot laid down there, so I'm kind of like blending it in and feeling like maybe there's more on my brush, so I'll just take it under the jaw. But you can see this side's been sitting here for a little while and it's still blending no problem. The tone seems really good. I feel like I, I could have bought one that's lighter than this, but I like to sometimes err on the side of it going a little darker because then I can use less or think about it being more effective on me as we get into the summer and maybe I got a little more tan on my skin. Really liking the way it's looking around the hairline. Gentle, like really good. It blended out so fully. I just want to feel it. 
Okay, soft, smooth, definitely not setting too fast. You saw how, you know, what had been sitting there the longest still blended in super well. Feels to me a lot like my Persona stick. It's incredibly creamy, a soft amount of pressure to the skin really lays down a good amount of product, so just be aware of that. So yeah, again, I'm adding this to a list of products that blended in well and have done well. Didn't necessarily need it, but I do like it. Did I work into a better scent? No, it's just, not super sweet. It's like semi-sweet. You say semi-sweet or semi-sweet. I, I think I say it both ways. Oh, you know what I made last night with Biddy? We saw a girl making this on TikTok and we were pretty much convinced that we needed to make it ourselves. Um, ambrosia. Ambrosia salad, you know, with the mandarin oranges and the pineapple and the cherries and the Cool Whip and the shredded coconut. It, it was so good. Absolutely delightful. Kind of a funny thing to, you know, just be busting out on a random Monday night, but I got the stuff for it and she loves to be involved in any kind of cooking, so I thought that would be really good for her to make. It's got the mini marshmallows in it too. She dumped it all together, just got a kick out of it. Why would we cut out now and not show some blush going on? So let's find a blush. I didn't buy a new blush this time around. You know what? Too Faced sent this one recently in PR, the Cloud Crush, in the shade um, Candy Clouds. Really bright pink, and I already had Golden Hour, which I thought was pinky, so let's compare. This is the one called Golden Hour. I thought I already had, like, bright pink, but they're two different tones. This is a little warmer. This is a little cooler, and it seems matte. I just love these little compacts. They do a great job with those. Okay, there's just a little bit. Need a little bit more. Mmm, fresh. I like it. It's reminding me of something I have from Believe Beauty from Dollar General. I've got a really nice cool pink. Problem is they just don't stock that stuff well. It makes me worried about the brand. Like, can we have things on hand that I talk about <laughs> so people can find them? Okay, that's fresh and fun. I would say it takes a couple build-ups. The first go-round is not quite enough of this for me, but second one, yes. Then we need a highlight. I'm gonna use my Laura Geller Quad Highlight, which this is a brilliant product. Um, I love Laura Geller's baked stuff, as you know, and this has two of her more shimmery highlights and two of the more matte ones. So it's got baked French vanilla, and then I think this one's French Kiss, two softer ones, and then these two have more shimmer. And I just love using this. I'm doing a little French vanilla and a little bit of the shimmery buddy next to it. The other shades are Portofino and Golden Rose. But just giving me a little, see that light glow? It's very customizable. I got this off of her website. I don't know. I feel like I've had it over a year probably. Love it. Or did I get it from QVC? I know I have seen it on the website, her own website too. I just like using the Laura Geller website because there's always some kind of deal. Now I will just uh, do the brows and then we'll come back and do the eye look. All right guys, my brows are done. I used the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in shade four and NYX Control Freak. And I'm just really liking the way the skin looks. I, you know, set my under eye with my Wet n Wild and a little bit right up in here, but there's not a lot of powder on my skin. And I think it's looking really pretty with with the foundation-y products and then that uh, cream bronzer. But this is the palette I wanted to get. I'm a sucker for a matte palette, so I got the uh, Makeup by Mario Master Mattes The Neutrals palette. Here's what that looks like. <laughs> Not super exciting, but I do love an all matte look. I really get a lot of enjoyment out of blending out matte shadows. And when I saw the color scheme, I thought I might really have fun with this. And not that I'm seeing myself as super on trend or anything, but I do think people are going for more of a natural looking eye these days. Kind of soft, naturally contoured. I feel like it's been that way for a while. I am kind of ready for big time eyeshadow to come back with the masses. I'll still do, you know, full on eyeshadow look every single day. Day. And I encourage all of you to do exactly what you want to do and what you feel comfortable doing. But it just seems like people are trending toward lesser bold looks. Let's do this. Woo! Thank you for the little tab, Mario. Appreciate it. But you know what kind of sent me over the edge for this? I was looking at Mario's stuff and I realized he has a brush. It's called the E6 Cosmetic Brush. It's double-ended. And I thought, you know, this looks like a really good brush. It's got the small part there. Oh, that could not be any more like the Essence of Beauty Fine Crease Brush from the early apartment days of my channel. I always loved having a brush with some precision like that and you know there was a duo that they'd sell at Walgreens and this is so much that shape it's a little 
stiffer. And then, you know, we have Profusion small pointed brush. I'm totally set pretty much on drugstore price brushes. So I didn't have to pursue this, but I just wanted to see if these two were good. And then this one's kind of flat with just a little fluff toward the end. Do you see the silhouette of this brush? little bit of fluff out toward the end, but all in all, there's some flat surface area. I just thought this could be a really good brush. I'm a little concerned that this isn't quite as mobile as I want it to be, but we'll see. I'll start out with my crease brush, just getting some of these shades going in the crease, and then we'll go to this little friend. Just excited to try a new brush, you know? Um, I'm gonna go to this shade right here. It looks like it's got a hint more pink in it, but I feel like anything in that row could be good to just go in the crease. And I've still been enjoying and using my Patrick Ta All Matte Palette on and off. Soft, kind of natural crease going on here. It's definitely dark enough to show, but might be ideal kind of blending the edge of something just slightly deeper in the crease. They're kicking up a little bit of powder, but not an obnoxious amount. Let's go right next door. Let's use a little bit of that guy. A Little bit deeper there in the crease. This palette is just gonna give a really natural look. You notice nothing is super warm in it. Like there are some sort of warmer shades within, but nothing going to the point of being orangey or whatever. I think his first palette had overall more warm opportunities. So the depth right now is just coming from um, that shade right there. Um, we could blend up above it with any of these. Just grab whatever from the top and use it to blend out the edge, yeah. When I saw the palette, I thought it looks like that top row would be a great sort of blend it out, ease your shadow look into a really smooth look, make it look very professional. I wanna go deeper yet, still with my crease brush. This shade's even deeper. Pick a little bit of that up. We're going right off the tip of the brush and right to the outer part of my eye. Oh yeah. And when I'm doing these crease shades, especially, you know, like as I get a little older, I feel like my face at rest, things are dropping a little bit more. So I'm taking my eyeshadow, not just like, oh, stick it in the crease, but very much focused on going above the crease. So that way, you know, there's always a little bit more of a lift going on. Again, shade on the end of the middle row. If anybody else picked this up, um, let me know if you're liking it, what you feel like it compares to. I feel like it compares to something I've got from The Balm, one of their meat matte palettes, because it had some grayish stuff. I, I wanna pull that out and show you. Also, we could pull out the original Mario. See, this was his first matte palette, and this is this one. So a lot more warmth popping out in that one. That one's just called Master Mattes. This is Master Mattes The Neutrals. This is the Meat Matte Nude palette. It's got those cool browns and then it's got like some kind of grayish colors. So similar. Um, it's got this rogue like soft buttery shade too, but if you didn't really see that, Look at how much the same those are. So we got the crease done. I want to pull in, again, this is the E6 brush. I want to take something from this bottom row. I'm going to take this rich brown right here. Pick it up with that more flat side and just see, ooh, I'm liking the feeling of the way that lays down a lot. I was kind of wondering, you know, it's not totally flat. Will it pack it on well enough, but at least with a pigmented shade like this, it's doing very well. I just kind of like this brush because it felt like Mario put a couple of things in one brush that are just not out on the market enough. And one is at least a near flat brush and then one of these smaller brushes. So that cool brown bottom row, we're just patting it in. We can feel the fluff end of that brush kind of coming up and touching our crease. And then we can go into maybe the shade next door with the small side. And yeah, the one problem for me with this brush is that it doesn't quite move enough. It's very firm, um, meaning I think it could make a great smudgy lower liner, but it's not doing those outer circular motions with the ease of the Profusion small pointed brush. Ugh, darn. I mean, this is still a brush I could get use out of. I'm not really knocking it majorly. I just wish there was a bit more mobility in those bristles because you won't get as great of a blend if those bristles aren't moving with you a bit more. Still gonna work with it. Still taking that shade on the end right there and kind of like helping 
ease up from our dark shade. Definitely not struggling to blend with this palette. I think it's doing a really good job. Uh, I'm gonna clean off that flat side and I'm gonna go to something just a little lighter. Maybe we go over to the end of this row. It's a very nude shade. It's feeling so much like a skin tone match. A little deeper maybe. And I'm just putting that on my inner lid and letting it blend with the rest. Wow, you're really able to achieve some smooth, seamless looks with this palette because of how close the gradient is. Things aren't jumping off being super far away from each other. Um, and I think you could kind of look down the row of threes and use them just like that. That that seems to make sense to me as I look vertically. Or you can just kind of bounce around the palette and do whatever you feel because generally speaking, we've got light blender types of shades. We've got mid-tones to start out in your crease and we've got depth. Um, that could act almost like liner. So I will use this brush. Let's go into the dark brown again. Tip of the brush, the smaller end. It's just feeling a bit more suited to be acting like a pencil brush rather than a small outer corner blender type of thing. But yeah, just getting a little bit of product, paying attention to getting it just on the tip of the brush so that way we're seeing exactly where that's going and none is like falling off the sides of the brush while we're blending in. I think I could have done a little better job blending the outer corner if I was using my usual tools, but it's nice. I'm not mad at it. I just wish that side had a little more flexibility. All right, friends, I did liner. I did mascara. Um, the liner I used, I did a little bit of a wing with it. It's the Physician's Formula, really skinny, super skinny, whatever. I did my Physician's Formula mascara, the butter. <laughs> We've been so worried about you. We've been wondering. Physician's Formula, the Butter Bronzer Mascara, which I kind of wish was black, but I love the texture of it. I like how it makes the lashes really thick. So I've got that on the upper lashes, and then I've got Cali Ray on the lower. And I did use just a little, like, angled liner brush to kind of connect my shadow to my wing. And then the final thing in this haul, I got a new lip product from Tower 28. Um, it's the Lip Softy Tinted Lip Treatment, and I have the shade Blood Orange Vanilla. So let's see what this is all about. I haven't even taken it out yet. Ooh. But I heard these were good. I think one of you said in a video where I was using another Tower 28 gloss, one of you guys said, try these. So, okay, it actually does look reddish. What does it smell like? Can't get, yeah, a little citrusy. like that I'm really seeing red color across the lips. It feels really good. I'm hoping it's not too slippery, you know what I mean? To like, I don't want it to slip outside my lips. But I'm really seeing a pretty soft red tint. I love that color. Oh no. <laughs> I dropped it, but I caught it between my legs. That scent is like something I've smelled before in makeup, maybe in a lip smacker or something. Just that citrus vibe, but yet I am getting the sweetness of a little vanilla too. Really pretty color. Like I said, I hope it, maybe as I wear it, it will just thicken up slightly because it's on the verge of being like, I'm a little worried about it drifting outside my lip line. Might be good to sort of fence this in with a little liner, like apply a little liner first and then do this and maybe you'd have a better staying power thing overall. But my lips were feeling dry with this going on and now they do feel fantastic. So that's good. All in all with this haul, um, I'm, I'm pleased. Nothing has full on disappointed me, but I'm not like jumping up and down the way I felt inside when like I used Rimmel Lasting finish and maybe that was just a tough act to follow. I don't know. I'm really excited to use more of the Ilia stick because I do think that went on nicely, blended out well, was a very good skin tone match. I'm excited to see this in action too, so each of these kind of independently. This went on beautifully well also, but I just wasn't in need necessarily of these products. I just wanted to try them. My little neutral Mario palette, I think I'm gonna have a good time creating looks with this, blending it out. It's a very pleasing, easy blending situation and the textures of the shadows are such that they're just very easy to work with, you know? I do think that's a win. I think I'll enjoy that going forward. I think I will enjoy this too. I love when a gloss gives some color and that really does. It's a beautiful, like delicate reddish tint there. And you know, as it sits on my lips a bit more, it is becoming a little more one with the lips. It immediately felt like maybe this is gonna be greasy, but actually I think this is working for me. So thank you all for tuning in for this video. Let me know if you've been experimenting with any of these same products and I will see you again very soon. I love you, bye.